YouTube, what the crap's going on? Era of Carthage, and yes, I'm making a return to some multiplayer videos. I wasn't intending on giving them up. I just don't play a lot of quick battle. Other people haven't been playing as much multiplayer in my community, and so I got my streams restarted. I will be streaming on mostly Tuesday and Thursday night at 8 p.m. U.S. Central. Um, that may change from time to time. You can see here uh, who the uh, folks were fighting in this. I believe it's Ikatclaw and Valkanos on the other side, and then myself and Regina on this side. This is a 2v2 matchup where the rules were that each team had to pick factions and lords that just hate each other's guts. So it's like an unholy alliance is what I call it. And in this one, it's going to be Alethanar teaming up with none other than the wannabe uh, Phoenix King Malekith. Or did he become the actual Phoenix King? I don't remember how that worked exactly. But anyway, yeah, we have um, Alethanar and um, his units. I'm going to slow it down for just a second so we can hit it all. Uh, Malekith is leading a bunch of infantry. He's got four bleak swords, two dread spears, two black art corsairs, a witch elf, in the middle, four Harganeth Executioners. So Malekith has brought the Infantry Pain because the Dark Elves just do that very well. Alethanar, uh, led by Regina, and she has Aleth, of course. He's brought a couple of Shadow Walkers, and again, just to kind of remind yourself on these Shadow Walker units, they have Poison Melee Attack and Poison Missile Strength with very nice range, a, um, a very nice firing arc, and then they also, um, can, I think they can fire while moving. Yeah, they can fire while moving, and they're extremely good in melee late in the game with low armor units. Um, Regina is supporting her army with a couple of mages. Uh, one has the uh, high magic here, and you can see that there's Tempest, and she's using that beautifully to control the dwarf gyrocopters that she must have guessed would await us here. There are some silver helms here for Alethanar as well. Some of them are deployed in, uh, behind my troops on either flank, along with some Illyrian reavers, and then a beast mage. Uh, with only one spell here, make sure I get it right, it's the Amber Spear. Um, so potentially to try and cause armor penetration damage, maybe against a single entity unit. Um, but the uh, Chariot obviously meant to be good against Stunties and Greenskin Infantry. She's also got a couple of Great Eagles up in the air supporting. As for the Dwarfs, you can see the Gyros here. One Gyrocopter with a Brimstone Gun has already succumbed to the Tempest and Eagle Attack. And then um, we have a gyro bomber that's supporting, as well as another gyrocopter with brims, or I think it's two more, yeah, brimstone gun copters. Uh, the front line and the dwarves are led by Belagar Ironhammer, of course, and he's got his back turned to us because he thinks so little of our unholy alliance, or he thinks so little of himself because look who he has allied himself with, none other than Skarsnik, the uh, supposed goblin king of Eight Peaks. So we can see Skarsnik back here allied with Belagar. So these are indeed factions that hate each other's guts. The dwarves have two hammers up front. This is going to provide very huge AP uh, damage for the dwarves. Backing them up as a miner with blasting charges. I like this a lot. You know, basically deflect the charge and damage a unit and let the hammers finish them off. They are also backed up by thunders, protected by the dragonback slayers. And then um, the dwarves have other support units as well. There are some warriors with great weapons on the flanks, which are going to cause some potentially good AP damage. And then as for um, Skarsnik's army, he has a couple of goblin big bosses, and then a river troll hag. There's going to be some night goblins, orc boys, and then back here in the back, more boys. And they are supporting some night goblin squig hoppers on the flank. And then on this flank, we've got more boys, and then a lot of wolf riders. And they also have back here a goblin rock lobber and a rusty errors and then a standard rock lobber or yeah sorry two goblin rock lobbers. Um, so they have some range. We were expecting them to bring even more range, but they came heavier on infantry. So we came heavy on infantry, not wanting to fight a ranged battle against the uh, the greenskins and the dwarves. Honestly, the greenskins and the dwarves can put together a decent range game, mostly due to the dwarves. But the greenskins do have some nice. Uh, pieces to add to a ranged game like Doom Diver catapults are really good against certain units, um, and then they also have the uh, Regiment of Renown. Um, what do you call it? Uh, Rogue Idol. They can do some rock throwing. You're gonna see my forces pushing forward. Regina is gonna provide the aerial support. I want to get in and cause some damage in melee. As far as the plan goes, the Bleak Swords are gonna be used to run the primary engagement so that my better units like Black Art Corsairs, Witch Elves, Executioners, units that are better versus infantry won't take all the damage. And I do accidentally misclick Malekith and I was like, oh boy, that's a lot of Thunderers. And so I get Malekith back out of there quick. 
but not before he does it take a couple of shots. And he's on the cold one chariot just to really troll the stunties. Here you can see the bleak swords. They're going to do what I need them to do, which is absorb the blasting charges so that my executioners do not. I want my executioners to come in at full health and full charge. So unfortunately, that means these bleak swords must be sacrificed to Kane's bloodlust. And I'm going to slow this down for just a second because I do want you to see the mainline charge. But in the meanwhile, Regina has started a massive cavalry charge on the flank. She is leading her silver helms against the night goblin squig hoppers and then the gobbo big bosses as well and her high mage, and I've got some dread spears nearby for support, as well as some black art corsairs chasing down some night goblins over here. You can see that my bleak swords have also engaged some orc boys over here. So let's uh, go ahead and hit play again. Let you all see. You can see that the battle in the skies continues as the great eagles look for their targets, and these executioners get a full-on free charge into the hammers, and they are going to wreck the hammers. Hammers are good units, but taking a charge like that from Executioners, and I'm pretty sure Executioners, pound for pound, are the best infantry units in the game. Um, I, I, from the testing I've done, it was very close between them and Swordmasters of Hoeth, and I believe that the Swordmasters of Hoeth actually did lose by just a hair to the Executioners. Uh, the Crimson Killers may take that, or Chosen with Great Weapon. I don't, I don't know, though. I don't, that's another interesting one I should probably retest. But I know the Executioners are way up there in terms of their strength, and you can see they're doing very well. Using the Witch Elves to help clean up this fight, the Dragonback Slayers are getting pushed back. That was an Amber Spear, actually, I think, that just hit the uh, Gyrocopters. I could be wrong. Great Eagle's taking shots from the Thunders. I've left some units back to keep Aleth and R safe from the, uh, the Horde of Goblin Cavalry. You can see over here the Gyro Bomber was intended to go do some bombing runs, but it looks like the uh, micromanagement has been required elsewhere. And uh, Regina is able to use her eagles to try and level that fight. Now on this flank, uh, the Greenskins are doing well. Regina's cavalry force has been blunted somewhat. The beautiful, beautiful purple sun here from the River Troll Hag that clears out all my spears, badly damaged a Silverhelm, and then nearly killed another. And then here comes the Wa. So the Greenskins aren't done yet. My Blackheart Corsairs, who started off good, are now going to get pummeled by Greenskin units under the influence of Wa. Uh, but my executioners and witch elves are absolutely shredding through the center though the dragonback slayers have come in and managed to hold my initial executioner who cleaned up the hammerer so quick um, it's now being held the dwarf units um, are still being supported back here by green skin units and over here I've got another fight where my executioners are taking on some warriors uh, you can see the black art corsair here actually did not end up doing well in that fight Malekith has taken a lot of damage. He's been the focus of the gyrocopters and the guns. And so Malekith is going to have to uh, chase off Belagar. So I'm going to put him to that task. But a goblin big boss wants a piece of him uh, along the way as well. So he's going to come in here and try and get a piece of Malekith and hit him with uh, They Need Stabbin, which was a pretty good move. But I'm able to use my executioners to help support Malekith. And he'll continue to chase Belagar. Uh, the front line, um, you can see that the Greenskins finally stopped some of my frontal assault. <coughs> but some of it made it through just fine. My Dread Spears and Witch Elves, and the Witch Elves have been on an absolute killing spree. Uh, they are going to move through here now, too. They're going to start supporting the Silver Helms. I'm going to use the Spears to attack the giant River Troll Hag. See Regina's mages still rolling around in their chariots. Her archers are still alive. They're protected by Dread Spears which means that the Goblin Cavalry will be somewhat limited in their ability. Uh, and honestly, a fight with Shadow Walkers and Wolf Riders would be a tough fight for the uh, Wolf Riders. And you can see over here, my Executioners have eventually tanked this fight out as well. So they ended up being a good investment for this particular battle, though it can be hard to use this many. See, Alethanar actually manages to use his decoy here to distract the Goblins, and then my Dread Spears are going to fill in, and now the Shadow Walkers can stand back and start shooting in here as well. Right now they're routing one wolf unit, and they'll soon go after another. So Aleth and R are using his uh, sweet decoy ability here to trick the enemies. And at this point, the uh, dwarves are being chased by Illyrian Reavers, Silver Helms, and Mages. And so their last remaining gun units are having a hard time being effective. You can see here that I'm chasing these orc boys. They're fleeing away back here. The witch elves are attacking um, Skarsnik right now. They're now up to 155 kills and almost to a second chevron. The Dread Spear is slowly being killed by the River Troll Hag, but they're doing a good job of doing damage to her. She's not particularly high armor, 
Uh, though she does re uh, regenerate, so that's the reason why they can't just straight up drop her. The Greenskins did win this fight on the left flank, and like I said, it was partly due to just absolutely brilliant Purple Sun. And the Dwarves did manage to slow down a significant amount of my infantry in the center, but it wasn't all of it, and really it was the help of Regina and her mages and eagles that kind of helped push me through the center and have a few forces left. Malekith did chase down Belagar. He's going to spend the rest of the battle back towards the back, uh, not getting killed. So just like Malekith, I guess, to go back and um, to, uh, to sit and do nothing in the background. Meanwhile, we're going to get the uh, River Troll Hag and the boys duking it out with the Executioners. And the Executioners just aren't having it, and neither are the Witch Elves. Despite all of the sweet somersault moves. Skarsnik did get berserked, and he's now routed. And uh, the Unholy Alliance of Elves is going to beat the Unholy Alliance of the Wah and the Beard. If you all like these Unholy Alliance battles, let me know. If you have some other ideas in the chat that we can play on our uh, streams, let me know. I do have some themed FFAs that came out of the stream as well. So I will be showing those. The, the whole purpose of the stream is so, number one, I can interact with you all and still get to play multiplayer because I really like playing multiplayer games that have a little bit more theme and more fun them, uh, to them than just like a straight up 1v1. And I'm not saying I don't like the tournament scene. I don't play in the tournament scene. I don't mind watching it, but I don't play in the tournament scene. So this is my type of multiplayer here where it's just friends having a good time. Of course you're trying to win, but ultimately it's to have a good time. The funny faction picks, the army types, the team battles, the FFAs, it's all meant to just kind of have some fun with the multiplayer while not taking it too seriously, right? Um, but again, I like that, that 1v1 play. It's just not something that I do personally, so that's why I don't cover it as much on the channel. doesn't mean we won't cover it occasionally like when we did the Crump and Cup tournament. But uh, anyway, as far as my armies go, the Executioners were the key units for me as well as the Witch Elves. This bottom line here did most of my work. Malekith actually took quite a beating early on and didn't provide a ton in the battle. Regina did a fantastic job supporting. Um, her all-support army here was exactly what I needed. She had the mobility and um, she also had the range that did some serious damage. Um, and she kept her lord safe. Really good damage with the mages on the chariots as well. And then the eagles didn't get a ton of kills, but they did get rid of those gyros, which would have been a, a big problem for us. As for uh, Valkanos here, RTK Valkanos, uh, cool army that he brought here. I love the gyros giving the dwarves mobility. A lot of people don't use those options. And honestly, Regina just came very well prepared for this. Otherwise, these this amount of gyrocopters can be a big problem. The gyrocopter with brimstone gun is good in multiple situations, and I think a lot of people underestimate the dwarves' ability to have that mobility, and it's a good call to try and take advantage of plenty of gyrocopters. A lot of AP infantry, um, he was obviously expecting to have to fight against some tough stuff since it was the High Elves and the Dark Elves, and both of those factions can bring some tanky uh, infantry if they decide to. And even if they don't decide to, the infantry he brought here would have been quite potent against all the lower tier infantry had we gone with a different build type. I think they may have expected us to have more archers and crossbows, and so they were going to sit back and use the uh, green skin range component to draw us in, and then try and gain an advantage, um, but it didn't end up working out this time. Ikat Claw and his green skins. I love the uh, double gobbo big boss here for the they need stabbing. This was a, a fun thing, very sneaky gobbo schemes, and the river troll hag is obviously a favorite of mine, especially from the Grom campaign. Um, nice combination of boys and gobbos. And uh, I love all the goblin-like cavalry, too. Very nice army for the Greenskins. He had uh, pretty good success with his uh, catapults, actually. They picked up a chevron during the fight, unless he threw that on there before the battle. Um, and he really did a good job with that Purple Sun. Look at the kills here on the River Troll Hag. We got hurt bad by that Purple Sun on our right flank. It was an excellent move by Ica Claw. An excellent move, indeed. And I really did like the deployment of the miners behind the hammerers. It didn't work out here for Valkanos because I was in a double line formation with the cheap units up front. This actually was a good idea that just didn't execute exactly like what he wanted here because then those hammerers not getting charged would have done tremendous damage to any elite infantry that would have just rolled straight through those blasting charges, not to mention the shots they may have taken from the thunderers on the way in as well. So... Uh, GG's. Thanks to all the players who joined this. I'll be back soon with some more multiplayer action. And uh, if you want to join the next stream, it should be Thursday, um, which is going to be... Let me get the right time here. It's going to be Thursday, August 27th. Could end up being Friday the 28th. I'll get it scheduled soon, but it'll be at 8 p.m. U.S. Central Time either way. If you want to participate, please go join my Discord. 
I put the announcements up there, and then there's a chat room, or like a thread, that you all can go put notes in when I'm asking who wants to join, and it helps me organize those. So we'd love to have you there. Air of Carthage signing out for now. I will see you all soon.